I just, it ended up turning into Pink Freak. Wow. And has pink always been a color for you? Like, is it always yeah. been something you've been attached to? When I was to? really little, I loved pink. And then I kind of went through a phase where I was like emo when I hated pink. <laughs> of course. Then, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Bring me the word. Uh, my name is Adam, by the way, and uh, this podcast is about you and your journey in music. And we'll talk about your new EP, Queen of Nothing. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, cool. Um, where were you born and raised? I was actually born in Washington State, but I grew up like everywhere in the U.S. So I've lived in like most of the states. So I've been everywhere, but my home base is kind of New York now. Okay. So born in Washington State and then were, yeah. was it were you in a military family? Like why were you moving around so much? My dad just has a lot of contracting jobs. Like he's a computer programmer and an artificial oh. intelligence engineer. So we just kind of moved around everywhere. That's cool. Yeah. So how, like how often were you moving? Um, like once a year for most of my life. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. So you were like in how many states would you say? Oh gosh, probably like up to 10 states. Really? Yeah. Wow. What was that like? Did you have to, I mean, changing schools every year? Were you doing homeschool? Like, how, how was that? Yeah, I mean, I did. I always went to school, like public schooling, but it was crazy because like, I, yeah, obviously I had to change schools every year. So I never really had to got to make like long term friendships. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, I didn't I didn't hate it. I learned a lot about like making friends and about kind of fitting in to different communities. And I learned a lot about like different people and stuff. So I don't I don't regret it at all. That's cool. I mean, I can imagine that being hard. I mean, unless cer cer certain people can do that, right? You just go and just <laughs> make friends with anyone, no matter what. But I, think I would find that very hard. <laughs> I think probably since we started when I was really little, then it was easier for me because it kind of was just how I lived. But I could definitely see now if I did it now, it would be a lot harder. <laughs> <laughs> sure. When did you get into music? So I've been singing my whole life kind of just for fun. And I've always loved music. Like it was something that was really important to me. Like like I said, we moved a lot and I love to listen to music while we were in the car and while we were, you know, packing and all that. And so it's kind of like a constant for me. And then I got into chorus in middle school and it kind of taught me a little bit about like the actual like correct way to sing instead of just singing along to stuff. And then I got into musical theater in high school. And so through that, I kind of just learned on my own and through school. And then I actually started doing it professionally. Um, my second year of college, I dropped out of pre-medical school to the music so, yeah wow so well I'm, I'm curious to know like being in chorus in middle school like when you switch schools did you have to retry out for their chorus or choir and then keep doing that kind of along the along the way yeah so I only went to chorus for like, I think three different years in a row and every time I had to I had to try out and go to different <laughs> like get into different classes but it was never too hard it was it was pretty easy because I just walk in and do like the basic scales and stuff and that's it so <laughs> oh, okay was there any like uh particular teacher that you wish that you could have stayed with that you had to kind of leave definitely yeah my my first one course teacher ever had um Mr. Vara he was really cool oh, okay <laughs> and then you got into musical theater in high school yeah I did a lot of musicals and I did a lot of plays too but musicals were more my thing and it kind of taught me to have stage presence because before that I was like a huge shy mess and like my freshman year before I was in theater, I tried out for like the, they had this like, you know, like America's Got Talent, but they had it for like our high school. Oh, <laughs> and cool. I tried out for that, but I was like a huge mess because I'd never performed in front of people really like on my own. And so, but through theater, I learned a lot about like just being myself on stage and stuff. And I got a lot of confidence through that. So was that a, I mean, that must've been a hard thing to do, right? Getting on stage. I always find this funny, like people that do their first performances in front of their entire school, or it's like the most probably brutal people <laughs> that could ever be judging you. And you're gonna have to see these people all the time, right? After yep. that. I mean, <laughs> I would imagine just going into some random coffee shop would be so much easier because you're probably never gonna run into these people ever again. You're probably right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Um, so what were you moving that much when you're in high school too? So once you got into musical theater, were you still moving every year? No, actually in high school is when we settled down. So I stayed in Florida for all of high school. And it was kind of like a, we did that for high school because it was like, it's hard to transfer credits and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we were like, let's settle down somewhere for high school. And so that's where we, we went to Florida. And then I stayed there for college too. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So you went to school for med, pre-med you said? Yeah, I was in, I was a philosophy major, but for a pre-med path. Yeah. Wow. What did you want to do? I want to be a psychiatrist. Oh, cool. 
Yeah. And then, okay, so you wanted, that was your goal, right? Your end game. And then you ended up dropping out your second year. Yeah. So it was kind of more like my parents' goal. I mean, like I, I, I did want to do something like psychology, helping people, but obviously like, parents want you to have a job that makes sense and that mm-hmm. can make you money and they care about that. And so my parents were like, yeah, go to pre-med. It's probably the safest bet for you. But then like my second year, I kind of realized that it wasn't the right path for me. Like, I don't know, there's like a lot of like bars when it comes to like psychiatry for what you can and can't do when it comes to helping people mm-hmm. that for me were like the bars were too big. And I wanted to find another way to help people that was, you know, that had less like rules and it had less of a, like a long time, like money commitment and, you know, like stuff like that. So I wanted to just find my own path in that world. So. Is, did you find that with music, being able to write mm-hmm. lyrics and singing to people and probably changing people's lives as far as that perspective went? Definitely. Like I didn't even plan it at first for honestly, it was like an outlet for me because I'm bad at talking about my feelings and stuff like just to people. But music was kind of a way to talk about the feelings that I had that were harder to talk about just face to face. And then it ended up being that it, by me doing that, it helped other people too, like me. And so it kind of just worked out that I got to do what I wanted to do in my life while doing something you know, not philosophy or not psychiatry, but music. So Sure. When did you start seeing that in your music where people are reaching out to you like online or like when did you start seeing that you're making a difference in people's lives? Yeah, it wasn't right away because at first I was doing like covers and I was posting songs and no one really heard them, but I wasn't really discouraged. And then I guess it was probably around when I released a song called Hold Your Phone, which was a song for like Suicide Awareness Day. And mm-hmm. I put it out and a lot of people reached out to me saying that it helped them. And I just kind of gradually more and more some I'd had fans who would message me and tell me that things you know what I said would help them or that they never thought that anyone thought the way they did until they heard my lyrics and stuff and so like through that I just kind of realized that there's ways to help people that work for me that must have been pretty impactful I'd imagine for sure yeah wow um what was it like getting those first messages from people were you kind of overwhelmed or how did yeah, you it's process kind of, that? It's kind of overwhelming. I mean, it's obviously an amazing honor and it's like helps me keep going in what I do, but it's also kind of scary because then I I fear that if I mess up, I might also affect them negatively. Mm-hmm. And so there is a bit of a burden there where I just, you know, if I'm able to affect them that much positively, then it's possible that I could mess up one day and hurt them too. But sure. I like to That's think positively point. when I can. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it, that is my biggest fear lately. I think with the more and more, I get more and more people messaging me. I think more and more about how my influence is growing and it scares me to think that I could possibly hurt people. But I think if I just keep, you know, staying true to myself and caring about who I'm singing to and not about making money and all that, then I think I'll stay on the right path, hopefully. Sure. You're the first person that's ever mentioned that to me. I've really? done like 800 of these. Uh, really? Really? And you're the first person that ever said something about maybe affecting somebody negatively. Like, yeah, you know, just kind of says something about you, like you're thinking about uh, everyone else that, you know, aside from yourself when you're writing your songs. Do you feel like that affects your like moving forward, like getting those messages? Was that even a thought in your mind? Like, OK, now I have to like make sure what I'm writing isn't going to flip the switch on people. I think it makes me think about it a little more, but in general, as long as I keep to what I've been planning, like what I want to say in my music, it never ends up being harmful. But sometimes it helps me steer away from people who are trying to get me to sing songs about like partying and stuff like that, things that aren't really like my up my alley. It helps me like stay focused on the path that I'm already on. Um, Mm -hmm. So I don't think it affects me, like it doesn't change what I'm doing, but it just helps Mm -hmm. me stay focused on what I'm doing now. I like that, I like that. Do you play an instrument or just sing? I play uke and I play bass. Okay. Oh, yeah. I've seen pictures of you with the bass. Yeah. So when did you start? Uh, what was the first instrument you learned how to play? Um, so I played a little bit of piano when I was younger. My grandma taught me some, oh, but cool. like I never got too good at it. Like I played in like a talent show once, like I played for Elise, but it was like pretty basic. And then um, the first instrument I really got into that like, was like mine was the ukulele and it was in high school. And I actually there was someone in high school who played it all the time while we were in theater and I always like admired him. So I bought a ukulele to try too. And that's kind of when I started playing uke. And that's the first instrument that I wrote music on and stuff. So. Wow. And yeah. okay, that's cool. And so did you play it all through high school? And obviously now you still play it. When did you pick up bass? Um, I picked up bass a couple of years ago because I was thinking I was going to like start performing for real. Like before I was performing to like backtracks mostly with like some synth. Mm-hmm. I'd play a little bit of like basic piano. 
but um I wanted to actually start like rocking more on stage <laughs> so I was like <laughs> I don't I don't love playing guitar just personally it's so hard for me to learn and bass for me like when I picked it up it just felt so perfect and like intuitive mm -hmm. and I also love just like how loud it is <laughs> so. sure <laughs> it's booming <laughs> yeah. for sure <laughs> when did you start uh when did you write your first song and actually show that to somebody like what was the first song you ever put up online what was it like doing that i think one of the first ones i ever put up online was called a note and it was i wrote it on like garage band and mm -hmm. it was like <laughs> i wrote it in college like back when i was just first venting and that's actually so my dad heard my music super early on when i was still in college and he was the first one to be like hey maybe it'd be cool if you like took a break like a semester break from college and tried to focus on music a little bit and he like wow he it was really cool because like I know a lot of people don't have parents that support them through you know endeavors like this so I felt really mm -hmm. lucky and he yeah he was one of the he heard like my first like five songs and he was like this is actually really cool like maybe you should do something with this and so he was the first person to ever hear my stuff <laughs> wow so he was kind of a big advocate for you early on he was yeah he always has been <laughs> that's really cool and then when did you start seeing a little bit of success um my first or my second release, I think, was Sorry I Love You. Um, mm -hmm. And when I released that one, it was all like super indie. Like I just made that on a garage band and I had put it out through like uh, some distribution website. And then I used like Submit Hub to put it up on like playlists and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, that one got a lot of traction early on for me as someone who'd had like a couple hundred plays on songs before. I got like a few thousand pretty fast. Wow. And yeah, so that one was my first one that people like actually heard and knew was Sorry I Love You. And that must have been cool, a cool feeling, like a validating moment, right? You're like, okay, really people cool, are yeah. yeah digging what I'm doing. It was and awesome. Did... Yeah, it was a really like personal song too. So it was like really cool that people actually dug like what I was saying in it. Mm -hmm. And that obviously, you know, you, now you have millions of streams. Like, what? Like, how did <laughs> how did the progression work? Like, after you put that song out, did you just keep putting more music out? Like, how did you kind of? What was the next level? Yeah, I put a lot of songs out on my own that were just like things that I wanted to. Like, I I had kind of have a short attention span, so I don't I didn't want to like make an album or an EP. I just kind of want to put out songs as I felt them. Like, mm -hmm. I would feel something, I'd write it, and then I'd put it out. And I did that a lot for a while. And then I um, I got like a team that kind of started helping me formulate, like it kept me kind of reined in <laughs> so I wouldn't just like throw things out into the world. Sure. And they helped me kind of pace things a little better. And then Pink Freak came out and that was when I first signed the label I'm on now, um, Photo Finish. Mm -hmm. And I put out Pink Freak and it kind of just blew up like immediately, like everything, they, they would like run ads and it would get like insane interaction and people were just like sharing it like crazy and it totally like it went viral I guess and yeah it's been crazy I see like I see million views and my brain just doesn't even comprehend it like <laughs> it's a lot of views right yeah. I mean millions upon millions of views I mean yeah. you have I'm just looking on your Spotify right now so like that song has over 2.2 million plays mm -hmm. Yeah. Like if you really put that in perspective, how many people that is, that's so many people. It's like more yeah. than like a regular major city, right? It's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, how did your team find you? Was it off of another song you had released or just kind of following you? Um, so my like close knit team, which is like the people that I go, they help me produce stuff and they help me like they helped me write when I need like inspiration. Mm -hmm. They I, they found me through Instagram. I was like promoting a show I was about to do. I was going to be performing at um, in Long Island City at some bar. And they messaged me and they were like, hey, can we come see you perform and chat about producing? And I was like, yeah, sure. And so they came and we like sat down and talked after my show and we just like hit it off like as people and as musicians. And so from there, we kind of just started writing together and through them, um, I put out like a couple of songs and then I think like Upside Down and Go Bad Ugly was through with them. And then we found the label, the label found us and we found the label kind of like back, like, cause we, they, we kind of knew each other. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, that's kind of how it all came together. It was basically through Instagram initially. So. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. And when, when did this all happen? Was it uh, pre pandemic? I would assume. Yeah. It was like, I think a year pre pandemic about was when I got signed. Okay. And yeah. How long? Well, uh, Pink Freak is on your new EP, and yes. was that a song you put out a while before the EP came out? Yeah, I put it out a couple of years ago, actually, and it was like I just I kind of wanted to use it to, like to tie it into the story that I had for my EP, and so I kind of brought it back in like a way that kind of brought life to it again. So mm -hmm. 
That's yeah. awesome. Where does the pink thing come from? I'm just curious. Obviously, it's a, probably your favorite color. Yeah, <laughs> the favorite color, but also, so the the song itself came from, I like, I was sitting down in a cafe and I was just kind of writing poetry about like how I was feeling and how for a lot of people, they say that like, you know, they kind of assume you have to look a certain way when you're sad and they use colors like blue or even like mm -hmm. black or darkness. But for me, I always like, even when I'm sad, I still dress pink. I still wear the colors I wear. And so I just, I was kind of writing a poem about like rose colored glasses and pink and blue and stuff like that. And I just, it ended up turning into pink freak. Wow. And has pink always been a color for you? Like, is it always yeah. been something you've been attached to? When I was to? really little, I loved pink. And then I kind of went through a phase where I was like emo and I hated pink. <laughs> of course. And then, <laughs> yep. and then, yeah, now I'm kind of, I'm back to being like, why would I hate pink? It's cute. And I love it. <laughs> That's cool. I love all your, your artwork too, that it's all affiliated with it. Like even like you have the photo of you with or the drawing with the blood, but it's pink. Yeah. <laughs> like just all <laughs> yeah, the I aesthetics of it. It's cool. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. When did you like where were you at when this whole when the pandemic happened? Were yeah, you so I was on actually, the CP or I was actually um like two days before a tour I was gonna go on with someone called Below. And I was like gonna be opening for her on a tour um in like Chicago, LA and something like that, New York. And like the day, the two days before lockdown first happened, we had our like last rehearsal and we were like, hopefully things don't get too bad and we can do our, we can do our tour. And then like, we got the, like that night after the rehearsal, we got the text that they were canceling the tour and stuff like that. And so that it really, sucked. it was very crushing. And like, it was, cause it was my first real, like, you know, tour across the country to like see my fans and stuff. And it really sucked. Cause we were like super excited for it, but at the same time, just, you know, we have more opportunities now to do other things and hopefully that we can do a tour again soon once it's safe. <laughs> sure. And there must've been like wind of it in the air, I would imagine prior yeah. to the rehearsals. Yeah. We, we were like, it was already kind of becoming a thing like the COVID, but we were still kind of hopeful and they were like, Oh no, it won't be, don't worry. It'll be fine. Like it'll blow over. Like there's no cases really here anyway. Right. And then like, <laughs> like that night they were like, oops, just kidding. <laughs> not safe <laughs> that's crazy it's it just blows my mind still thinking back at that like yeah it was pretty, everyone it, was just assuming like oh that never happens here yeah everyone like, just think it was not a big deal it was crazy we were all like oh no everyone's exaggerating like it's not a big deal and like it just hit so fast yeah yeah i was in my family and i we just moved to nashville but we were in san diego we were born and raised in san diego and um I remember hearing like there's like two cases in San Diego and, and like people are freaking out. I'm like, why are you freaking out? Like, you know, this is right. Th th when SARS happened, it was like the same thing. Like one person like in our city had it. It was like yep. no one, nothing happened. And then now it's it was like, how quickly yeah. did that change? You know, so I mean? fast. it's yeah. just blows my mind even to think about it now and how people are still inside. I mean, shows just started happening. Lollapalooza just happened like this weekend. And it's crazy. I know. To, like, my mind was like just watching they were doing like streams online or if you had a chance to see any of it it was just crazy to watch it it was like yeah whoa. i was seeing like, it was crazy seeing how many people were out there i was like surprised that it's kind of like all of a sudden everyone's outside again <laughs> right yeah like bonnaroo is happening here in tennessee and it's like <laughs> what <laughs> <Crazy>. <laughs> but i'm excited don't get me wrong <laughs> it's just wild okay so talk to me about this new ep it came out this year right not that long ago yeah it came um, out a couple a couple weeks ago yeah okay a couple weeks ago yeah. um when did the obviously pink pink freak was a song that you had written a couple years ago like how what was the process behind the album was it or the ep was it something you continued to work on is there like you said there's kind of like an underlying theme to it yeah so we've been kind of writing it for a while now i've been writing like pieces like some songs here and there and um i got to a point where I kind of wanted to tie it, all these songs I've written together. And I started to notice like a theme that I'd been, maybe it's just cause it was stuck in my head, but I was writing a lot about like queendoms and like, you know, like gems and kind of like materialism a little bit. And mm -hmm. I kind of, through writing it, I kind of weaved this story. Um, and for me, it was a story kind of about how I, like I said before, my fear of the future and what I could do for my fans and how my career could go. And it's kind of like how whenever I have interviews, people ask, where do you see yourself in 10 years or whatever? And I tend to be <laughs> pessimistic and my brain is like, well, in 10 years, you might do well in your career, but you also might crash and burn and mm -hmm. then like destroy everything. And so this EP was kind of like my response to that question in like a pessimistic way of like, 
as a story of like this queen who, you know, gains this community of people who understand her and then she kind of loses it all because she messes up. So. Wow. I, I'm glad I wasn't going to ask you that question. <laughs> 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 so actually, by the way, that, that was my next one. I'd be... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like it was, so this was something that kind of came together, like the, the storyline and the concept, like, were you like weaving it together after you were, you know, the tour was canceled or did you kind of already have this idea for what would become this record prior to the tour? Um, it was after it was after the tour. It was actually towards the end of um, like the pandemic, like sh- lockdown and stuff. Like when things were starting to open up again, was when mm-hmm. I went back and kind of started weaving the story because I already had a couple songs that were end up on the EP, and I wrote a couple more, and it all kind of came together like pretty close to when I released it. And so yeah, I kind of weaved the story like as I was writing the songs and also kind of after the songs. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And how did how did you adapt to the pandemic? Like in the beginning, were you like, okay, this thing's gonna blow over, and then <laughs> what? Like two weeks later, then it's okay. How do I, how do I yeah. pivot and kind of continue my <laughs> career? Like, how did you ad- adapt to that? Yeah, at the very beginning, I was hope I was like, oh, cool, like I get to kind of like chill for a while, and I get like an excuse <laughs> sure. to chill for a while, and it'd be nice, like because I was kind of running around doing a lot of work, mm-hmm. and then suddenly it was like, okay, well, it's been a lot longer than a while, <laughs> right, and then, like, yeah, everything shut down, like, there was no, like, music releases or anything going on, like, literally nothing, and we couldn't, obviously couldn't film or anything, and um, my whole family ended up moving in, because uh, my mom and brothers lived in Florida for a while because they were still in school after I moved here. But they came and ended up, we all kind of moved together into an apartment here in New York. So it was like me, my dad, my mom, my two little brothers. And we were all in like this tiny apartment. Like it was a one bedroom apartment that we were all stuffed into. And so, yeah, my, my creativity like kind of turned off during like- the I would imagine. Stuff. Yeah. So cool. Okay, so you, you were waiting, kind of seeing if stuff was going to blow over. Now you have all your family at your house. Yes, this is wild all... that they all moved to New York instead of you leaving and going to, to Florida just because of the cases were so crazy. Yeah, so there. for a while we did actually, we I escaped to Florida for a little bit to hang with them. And then like kind of towards the end, like when things were starting to like chill. Well, at first they were, they kind of came before everything went crazy. Mm-hmm. And then like the lockdown happened, so they stayed with us for a while. And then they went back to do a little bit of school. But yeah, then they came back once things were kind of opening back up and we all were just kind of locked together still in okay. the room. yeah my brothers were doing online schooling so like we had to be quiet all day <laughs> oh, like, no fun. what a nightmare that is right well had you had a chance to like from there once stuff kind of settled down did you do like live stream events or anything like that to kind of keep yourself occupied I did a couple live stream things honestly my like cre- my creativity and my like motivation to do any work was at like zero for so long just because of everything in the world but I actually Imagine. did um I did some like commission pieces of because I draw and I was donating the money to oh. Black Lives Matters for a while because I couldn't go out and protest and stuff like that and so yeah I was doing stuff like that to keep myself occupied but other than that I kind of just like chilled <laughs> that's right I didn't know you do you draw the art for your your stuff yes I do yeah all of it really yeah, the only You're one I didn't draw was, I think Earthworm's the only one I didn't do, but thank you so much. That is so cool. It's kind of like a sort of like an- Japanese animation style, but For not sure, yeah. quite. <laughs> <Fired by that>. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's cool. I didn't, I didn't realize that you did all the art. That's amazing. Is something, is drawing something you've always done? Yeah, I've been drawing for like since I was in fifth grade, I think. So yeah, most of my life. Wow. And were you always like an art class? Was that ever a passion of yours to kind of? go that way with life yeah like, I, I do love an art and I did want to be an artist for a while I thought about submitting to like some art schools but like that's like a pretty unreliable job and for me like I'm not very good at staying on top of things like that like on top of like the all the like I feel like if I were to do art as a career I'd end up hating art like the drawing right. aspect because that's just like how I am with art mm-hmm. and so I ended up just doing it as a hobby forever but <laughs> that's cool you're your own graphic designer it probably saves you some <laughs> time <laughs> and money that way saves yeah. a lot yeah <laughs> <laughs> well that's amazing so what do you what do you have plans come plans coming up are you gonna is that tour rescheduled or what i mean obviously the ep's out which is probably a great like big moment for you to just have it out there right it's amazing yeah i don't have a tour rescheduled yet um hopefully soon when things get safe i know like the like some of the cases are going up in some places so we're kind of waiting like to see if things chill out for long term but for now i've actually been i became a twitch partner recently so i'm i'm now like a i've been streaming on twitch a lot so that's been cool 
Oh, cool. Like doing, what are you doing on Twitch? Um, I do a lot of, <laughs> no, mostly, mostly singing. And like, I do some, I did some like Q and A and we listened to my al- my EP when it came out, we listened to it together on my Twitch. And then I did the other day, I did a thing where if you give me like a keyword in the chat and I'd write a song about it, like on live stream. So really, yeah, that's probably a cool exercise for you as well. It's really nice. Actually. Yeah. It's nice for me. <laughs> yeah. And do you have like a lot of people, I'm sure in their kind of, they probably get a, ra- a kick out of that. I mean, yeah, they love to- it to talk with you directly through the computer. That's so cool. For sure, yeah. And now I actually just opened a discord too. So now I have a cool discord with all my bubblegum soldiers. So it's been cool. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. That is the one thing I will say, and I've said this before for, from this pandemic is like, as a fan, like we get this behind the curtain look to your life. Like yeah. I mean, in what world would we see your room that you're singing and your dog barking? Like never, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> like if it wasn't for this pandemic, this conversation would be not happening this way. Right. Right. So I know yeah. that's crazy. And it's, it's it me, and it says something about like artists and in you as a person that you're willing to just like open up your world to everyone else. For sure. <laughs> I know, it's cool. <laughs> awesome. So Twitch is going discord. I love that. And then the EP's mm-hmm. out. Very yep. cool. Yeah. And thank you so much, Elliot, for doing this. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. I have one more question for you mm-hmm. before I let you go. Where do you see yourself now? Just kidding. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> do you have any advice for aspiring artists? Um, My biggest advice that I always give is to just create and to put it out there because that's we're in a world now where you don't have to wait for all um, like labels and you don't have to wait for anyone to do it for you. You can do it yourself. And so for me, that's what I did. And that's what worked for me. And I think it's important for people to realize that you don't have to wait and that your stuff doesn't have to be polished and perfect and to just put it out there and, you know, not to worry about numbers and stuff. And it'll, if you just be yourself and you keep doing it, it'll work out. Bring it back for you.